Yo, get a done dumpster rental and junk removal at your service. What's up, everybody? Uh, first, I want to apologize because it's been a while, I know, since the last time I made a video. Well, my computer crashed. Business has been crazy. It took me a while to get my computer back up and running, but I got it back and I'm back with you guys and I got a lot of stuff for you. First, today, what I'm gonna do is get back to one of my original videos on how to start a dumpster rental and junk removal service. I've done part one already and I know you guys like that one. I appreciate you, I'm way up in the thousands of, of likes. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. But uh, today, we are coming for part two. And yo guys, I put a lot of work into this one. I had to get a whole, everything I own lined up, lined out, take pictures, everything. I did a lot of work for you guys because I want y'all to be the best you can be. And this dumpster rental service, I love it, I love it. So first, before we get started, check out my intro. All right, guys, so what we're gonna start off with first is PPE. When you're starting a dumpster rental or junk removal service, first thing should always be on your mind is PPE, personal protective equipment. You gotta always protect yourself. Make sure you protect yourself at all costs because what good is this business gonna be to you if you're sitting at home because you're hurt? You done burnt yourself, you done dropped something on your foot, you done broke your hand. You gotta be responsible. You gotta protect yourself at all costs no matter what. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of PPE stuff and I'm gonna throw up some pictures during this video of all the stuff that I'm talking about so you see firsthand exactly what you need to start your business and run it effectively. First off, we got masks. Mask. Wear your mask. I know this job, you're not dealing with a whole lot of people, but oftentimes you gotta go through people's houses and you don't know these people. You don't know what they've been into, who they've been hanging around. And we got a pandemic still going on. So yes, wear your mask at all times. You know, I mean, when you're driving around, of course not, but if you're going to people's houses, wear your mask. Two, gloves. Put your gloves on. Wear your gloves, guys, because you don't know what you're touching. You don't know what these people done been into. Again, we in the pandemic. You don't know what they done coughed on, spit on. Wear your gloves. And not only that, but just to protect yourself from cuts and, and scratches and bruises and bumps. And, and you just want to make sure your hands are protected because these are some very important parts of your body and parts of your business. This is what runs your business. So take care of them. Three, boots. Wear your boots because a lot of times you're dealing with dresses, heavy TVs, and you show it, I want to drop a TV on your foot and you got on some Jordans. That's not going to feel very good. So yeah, wear your boots. Four, raincoat. Yes, sometimes we got to work out in the rain. I know some of y'all, I'm not working in the rain. I work in the rain. If it's making me some money, I'm going to get it. So I'm, we're putting on my raincoat and I'm getting out there and getting it. I guess they're done. <laughs> but um, shoe covers. Shoe covers is not really protecting you, but it's protecting your customer. Get you some shoe covers, because a lot of these people are real sedated, you know, and they don't want no dirt, no mud, and you shouldn't want to track nothing in people's houses anyway. So if you're going through their houses on their carpet and beautiful hardwood floors, get you some booties and put on your shoes, some shoe covers, and walk through the house, get whatever you need, and pull them off when you get done. Just, just being courteous and doing what you need to do to make sure people acknowledge you got a professional business. Now let's go to off and bug spray. Yeah, off is, I consider that personal protective equipment because sometimes the mosquitoes is bad out there. You working in the middle of the summer, it's a little humid, a little moist, and the mosquitoes are bad, gnats, fleas, whatever. You don't know what kind of yard you're working in. They might have dogs in their yard that didn't track a lot of fleas. Bring you some off. Spray yourself down whenever you're working out in the elements. And bring the bug spray, because a lot of times you're working with ants and spiders and stuff like that, so you can kind of spray stuff down before you get started. Disinfectant wipes. Keep a box of disinfectant wipes or a tube. I got like a, a tube that I keep in my truck, 
And every now and then I pull that out and wipe my hands down, wipe my steering wheel down. When I go in to eat, I bring a couple with me, wipe down, you know, the door handles or whatnot. Just, it comes in handy. Every little bit of protection helps. So bring your disinfectant. So now we're gonna move along to tools and supplies. So these are some of the tools and supplies that you'll need to effectively run your business. Now that we got all the protective stuff out of the way, let's see what you really need to run this business. First of all, I will get a toolbox. Now I got a toolbox that I mount to my trailer. And it's nice to have one. If you can mount one to every one of your trailers, that's the best way to go because you got everything for that trailer. You can keep locked in that box. Now inside that toolbox, I keep chalks. You got to keep wheel chalk. Now, as you can see from the pictures, there's several different kinds of chalks you can choose from. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever. If you want the cheapest, get the cheapest. If you want some heavy duty, get heavy duty. I got several of them. I got several different types and not because I chose them that way. It's just because of where I just happened to be at and I needed some. I went to the nearest place. That's what they had. I went online one time and ordered a couple. They had the little red ones you see in the pictures. Just as long as you get some chocks because you don't want your trailer rolling off down the hill while you ain't there and hurting somebody. Uh, next we got straps, bungee cords, and anchors. <laughs> straps, bungee cords, and anchors. Now your straps and bungee cords, you're going to need that to tie your tarp down. You may have some stuff on your truck itself. In the bed of your truck you need to strap down. You can use your straps to tr strap that down and jacket or bungee cords, whatever you need. But the most important thing, strap your stuff down, secure your load. You don't want nothing going down the freeway that you're not supposed to because that could cause an accident and possibly cause you a lot of money. So strap your stuff down, use your bungee cords, and there's some shackles, some little anchors that you use. I got a picture of them up, I'm sure. Um, get those anchors, get you several boxes of them, and you can mount those on your trailer wherever you want them. Like what I did is I put my tarp on my trailer. I, I draped it over, put it where I want it. Then I can get my bungee cords, strap them down and, and stretch them down to where I need an anchor. And that's where I screw my anchor in it. So you put your anchors wherever you need them to where it's most beneficial. Don't just start screwing them on because they'll end up in a spot where you'll never need them. If your tarp covers the anchors up, what good does that do? You need to be name them be down low so you can get to them. You need your tarp. I recommend getting a mesh tarp. Now you get whatever you can afford at the time. I'm not gonna tell you what you have to have because yes, I started with the old school blue tarp that you get real cheap at the dollar store, at Walmart, wherever, and I just strapped that over, strapped it down, put it on, bam, that's it's a wrap. But as I moved up, I moved along to the mesh tarp. The mesh tarp helps a lot because it don't flap a lot because the wind goes through it and so it lays flat it's very durable, it holds your stuff down, it stretches a little bit. Those old school blue ones, they're gonna do okay for a while, but the sun gonna eventually eat them up, they're gonna start tearing up. So yeah, go for the mesh tarps if you can. If you running it by yourself, you really only need one tarp, one tarp. Because, you know, from trailer to trailer, once you pick up a trailer, put that tarp on that trailer, go unload it. Take your tarp off, when you go get another one, you put it on that trailer. So you don't need a tarp for, tarp for every trailer to start off with. You don't have to have that. Just have one and you transport it from trailer to trailer. Okay, now you need a jack. Jacks are important because they come in for various reasons. For one, if you have a flat, you got a jack. For two, if you got a smaller trailer, you use the jack underneath the back of it. So when people are loading the refrigerator on the trailer, the trailer don't tilt over and you know cause an accident. You put your jack up on it to stabilize it. You can also use a jack for your trailer. Sometimes you parked at weird angles and, you, and your, your jack on, on your trailer is not high enough. It's, it doesn't have enough extension on it to reach up to your truck. So you might have to put a jack under there and lift it a little bit more to get it up on your truck. You, it's kind of hard to understand what I'm saying, but you, you'll see as you go along. Uh, broom and dustpan. Very essential in this business because you every time you unload your trailer, you got to clean it out for the next client. You don't want to bring a trailer to your next client and it's got dirt and debris all in it and tree limbs and stuff still scattered around on the floor. Clean your trailers out. You need a broom. You need a dustpan. 
I, pr I prefer having a regular broom and a big deck broom because the deck broom will clean it out really, really quick. A regular broom is good for getting in the corners, or, you know, and then you'll also need a broom for when you're doing junk removals. You might do a junk removal that's in their house, you know, maybe in the kitchen or dining room. You got to get a bunch of stuff out. When you finish, sweep it up. Make it look real professional. Don't just pick up the boxes and stuff and go sweep up behind yourself so you can leave that room clean. That's how you get more business. Now you need hitch locks. You do not want nobody stealing your trailers and they will steal your trailers. So when make sure for every trailer you have, you got a hitch lock. And that hitch lock, you just mount it where your ball normally go, you lock it, and then you leave. That way while you're gone, you don't have to worry about somebody coming back and stealing your trailer or the customer stealing your trailer because I hate to say that about customers, but it's ha it hasn't happened to me, but it will happen. You might get a call, I need to rent a trailer, and you go deliver your trailer, and you come back, and they all gone. The trailer gone, they gone, house empty. <laughs> it, it, it can happen. So make sure you lock your trailer, get a good hitch. You don't have to have the most expensive one, but just get something that you know they can't just cut real easy, or get a hammer and just knock it off. Okay, trash bags. You need trash bags, that's very important because it makes your job easier. You could, you could throw, just throw stuff in the trailer, but just think about it. If you just throw a bunch of junk in your trailer, you gotta unload that stuff off your trailer. So why make it hard on yourself? When you go in that garage, go in the yard, put as much as you can in trash bags, tie it up, throw it in the trailer. So once you get to the landfill, you just start throwing bags off and bam, 10 minutes later, you out of there, you gone. Make life easy on yourself. Use trash bags as much as possible and try to entice your customers to use trash bags if they're doing lawn debris or you know household trash garage cleanouts. Try to have them use trash bags. If, if, if you can, lead them with 10, 20 trash bags so they're not just going dumping shovelfuls of, and, and trash cans, dumping it in your trailer. Now you gotta pick all that up. Okay, a wheelbarrow and a shovel. They come in handy. Periodically, you might be doing yard removal and you might need to shovel up a bunch of leaves or something, put them in bags. And also, you know, if you're doing some heavy items, some big pieces of tree trunks or something, you can put them in a wheelbarrow and roll them across the yard into your trailer instead of trying to carry all that stuff. Uh, tires, you need to make sure you have spare tires. That's very important because in this business, you're going to the landfill back and forth every day, every other day, you're going to have a flat. Trust me, <laughs> you're going to have a flat. So make sure you got spare trailer tires and you got a spare truck tire with you at all times because you do not want to be stuck and now you got to leave your trailer or park your truck because you ain't got one and you got to get somebody to come help you, yada, yada, yada. Have your spare tire on for the trailers and for the truck. For me, I have a spare tire on every trailer. Each one has its own spare. So no matter where I go, I know I got a spare. I don't have to keep a spare in the truck. They're mounted to the trailer. And if you get a chance, get a, get get the mount that mounts to the trailer and you mount the tire to it. And that just makes life easy. You just, you got it with you at all times. You don't have to worry that I got a flat and ain't, ain't got a, a spare. Keep it on you at all times. Make sure you got the tools to do that with. You got to have a lug wrench, you got to have a jack, you got to have the jack handle. Make sure you got all that stuff with you so you don't end up with a flat and I got a tire, but I ain't got no way to change it. It happens. I done stopped and helped many people that had a spare tire in the trunk and didn't have a jack or didn't have a lug wrench. Take care of your business. A dolly. Dollies are very, very important. Why? Because in this business, you're going to be moving a lot of heavy stuff. You're gonna be moving refrigerators, stoves, washers, dryers, dishwashers, dresses, uh, furniture like couches and love seats. You're gonna have some heavy stuff. You're gonna have heavy boxes. A dolly makes life so much easier because you just take that dolly, scoop it under that, roll it into your trailer instead of trying to get two or three people to try to carry this item and set it in the trailer. Get you a nice dolly, heavy duty dolly. Don't get a cheap, 
Harbor Freight or Dollar Store General, Walmart, cheapest dollar, because the wheels are gonna break. Eventually your wheels gonna break. Get you a decent one. I think they sell about $25, $30 for a real nice one, but some heavy duty wheels. Next we got a few tools. These are a, few, a set of tools that you need to keep with you at all times. A hammer, a crowbar, drill, some cutters, and a grinder. I'm gonna try to, I'm, I'm gonna make a list of this. I'm gonna make a formal list of this and I'm gonna post it so you'll have this list to go along with all the pictures. You can always go back through the pictures and through the video and watch it again. But if you can have this and print it out, it'd be much better for you. So I'm gonna make sure I get y'all this. But a hammer, hammer and crowbar is essential because a lot of times you get dressers, huge dressers, and they dressers take up a lot of space. But a dresser that could be, you know, super tall, if you bust it down, you break it, take the dresses, the drawers apart, and ham get your hammer and bust them apart, you ain't gotta break it a million pieces, but dresses usually fall apart easy. You just tap the sides, the top, and they just gonna collapse. Then you end up down with a little bitty pile, a flat pile of stuff to put on your trailer that don't take up as much space. Now, if I got a lot of room on the trailer, I'm gonna throw the dresser on there and keep it rolling. Um, Drill, the drill is for the same thing. A lot of times you got tables and stuff. You got uh, basketball goals, stuff like that. That's huge that you can just unscrew a few screws and collapse it down, make it a lot easier on yourself. Keep a drill in the truck. I keep cutters in the truck because a lot of times you got cables and stuff that you can cut off of weight equipment and stuff to make stuff a little bit easier. Also, I cut the cords off of every electrical item I put in my trailer. Every one, I cut it off. We'll get into that a little bit later, but the cords is worth a lot more money if you cut them off and have them in bulk and bring them to the salvage yard. I keep a grinder, a grinder with a cutting wheel on it because a lot of times you got, again, tables, basketball goals, stuff that's awkward size and you don't have the right tools. It might take a special kind of wrench or something to take this one apart and you don't have it. So what you do, you get that grinder, whack it off. You just cut it in pieces, throw it in the trailer, good to go okay an air compressor or compressed tank um that's very important because you, like i said you're gonna get flats a lot of times i get nails and they don't put my tires on flat they just make them start going low over time like it take two or three days and my tires will go low i air them back up take two or three days to go down so Sometimes I'm, I'm moving, I'm, I'm in a hurry, I got a lot to do, I don't worry about it. If I know it's not going down in a couple of days, I'ma air it up and I'ma take it deliver it. I'ma pick it up, go dump it, and when I see it going down, I'ma air it up. Now, I like to keep just the tank. Keep the tank with you, because sometimes you might get to a job and your tire is flat, because you done ran over something there. Well, you stick that tank on there and air it right back up, that'll get you to the tire shop or get you home where you can fix it. So no matter where you at, you're gonna have it. Now air compressor, you can get you one that plugs into your cigarette lighter. Those take a long time to air up, but they work. Okay, uh, the next list is gonna be your optional. You don't have to have this to run your business, but these are just things that I'm gonna mention. So if you get a chance, you might even have it, keep it handy. One, pressure washer. You don't have to have a pressure washer because they got car washes everywhere. But if you, in this business, and if you get multiple trailers, you can avoid a lot of trips to the car wash by just bringing your stuff home and hooking your pressure wash up and pressure wash all of your trailers and trucks at one time, or you can pressure wash them as you need and don't have to go stopping, waiting for people to finish if the car wash is full, spending money. Some car washes nowadays take credit cards and they take a minimum of $5. You can do it for free at home. So I got a nice pressure washer. I clean my stuff every time I, I go through the landfill. It's usually going to end up nasty and dirty. I come home and spray it. Now, if it gets too nasty or people got stuff in my trailer that stinks, some old trash or something, I'll go to the, to the car wash and I'll spray it out so I don't have to have it stink at home. <laughs> now, Clorox and a spray bottle. Those are important at times, not mandatory, but sometimes you get freezers or deep free, uh, refrigerators and they left stuff in it. It happens, I don't like it, but that's, that's double money. Anytime you get stuff like that, that's double money. You're getting paid to pick it up and you can get paid to drop it off at the scrapyard, but you don't want something sitting on your trailer stinking. So 
have some Clorox and a spray bottle so you can spray that stuff down. You know, if you're stinking, you can spray it. You can spray your trailer, if stuff dripping your trailer, you can spray your trailer down so you don't have to bring your trailer to the next customer smelling like old rotten food. Now we got rolling trash bins. I love rolling trash bins. You know, the kind the trash truck comes, picks it up, dumps it, set it back. Get you an extra one and keep that on standby for your junk removals. Cause sometimes you going through, a, they got a whole house, they moving out and they'll bring you through each room, say this, this goes, that goes, all those trash bags, that bag, this room, this goes, in the garage, all of this goes. Well, you can take your trash can and walk through the house, filling that trash can up. You know, put a bag in it, fill it up, bring it out to the trailer, dump it in the trailer, go back in. That saves you a lot of walking and a lot of trips. Cause who wanna do all of that walking? Uh, they also come in handy for leaves, leaves and mulch and stuff like that. If you throwing away that kind of stuff, a bunch got to rake up a bunch of leaves, put them in the in the in the trash can, roll them on back. That way you can pull it all around the yard. Portable lights for your trailer. Those aren't mandatory. I like them because in this business, if you got multiple trailers, as careful as you try to be, at times it may happen. You may back into the garage uh, door frame. You may back through a tra through a fence and hit the side of the trailer. You might throw something off the trailer and it hits your light. You know, your lights stick out from the trailer and they get damaged sometimes often. You know, some people do go through the extra effort of welding a lot of contraptions around the lights to prevent the lights from getting hit. But if you hit it hard enough, you're still gonna bend that metal and you're gonna break your lights. So there you go, you having to get new lights and it leaves you driving around with no lights on one side. So I have the portable lights that you put on the back of your trailer and you run the cord and plug into the back of your truck and they're completely portable. You keep them, in, I keep them in a little, a little tool bag and I just swap them from trailer to trailer because I got a couple of trailers now. One I bought it and the lights didn't work, uh, one of the lights didn't work. One I hit the fence back in, in my yard, I hit the fence and broke a light. <laughs> it happens, but so now I just take them portable lights, go stick them on the back, plug them in, I'm gone. When I get home, I take them lights, put them back in the bag, or if I'm going to get another trailer, I put them in the bag, go get the other trailer, stick them on, and go. That way I know I always got two working lights at all times. So think about that. It might help you out. It might be easier for you. Now we got cones. I keep me a couple of orange cones because sometimes you may have to park out in the street and you put your cones up that way you, you're taking care of your business and you're being safe by alerting others. Hey, I'm parked here. Make sure you go around these cones. Don't hit my truck. Just cones is just courteous gesture for people to be careful to watch because you're parked there. A come along and a strap. I keep a come along and a strap with me because a lot of times you're gonna run into stuff like old ride lawnmowers, go-karts, go uh, golf carts, tractors, whatnot, that you gotta load on your trailer. The tire's probably gonna be flat because they're throwing it away because it's no good. You ain't got no tires to put on a lawnmower. You can use your compressor and try to air them up. I've done that, it worked a couple times. A couple times it didn't. The tires were just horrible and wouldn't air up. And that's hard to push a long ride lawnmower across the yard and around the corner and up the trailer on a flat. That's hard. So a good thing I do is I keep my come along and strap. That way, you know, you can, you can hook that come along to a tree or something and you can pull that thing across or you can hook it to your trailer. If you're trying to get it up on the trailer, you might be able to roll it straight. But once you're going up the trailer, depending on how high your trailer is, that's gonna be hard to do. So you can hook your come along onto it and start jacking and just pull it right on up on the trailer. Easy, easy, easy. So that's just something that can help you. You don't have to have it, but it'll help you down the road. Even with a car, you might end up buying a car because I scrap cars too. If you got a car in your yard and I, you let me give you $200 for it, $150 for it, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna bring it to the scrap yard and make even more money off of it. But I'm gonna need to come along or I'm gonna need a winch to pull that car up on the trailer. Okay, lastly, is we got lettering, stencils, paint, 
you know, if you're going to do it yourself, you get some stencils and some paint, paint brushes. These, this is for your, your trailer uh, logos and stuff in your business name. If you're going to have trailers, you want to get more business, get your names on your trailer. Get your, your information, your phone number, your Facebook, your YouTube, whatever. Get your information on there. It's very visible so people can see it. Um, you can take your place to a business and they can do the lettering, you know, with the laser stuff and come out and stick your letters on. You can get a sign made and then just put your sign on your trailer. What I chose to do, I'll post a picture of that, is I'm an artist. So I just bought a gallon of paint, some paint brushes, and I draw my own stuff on my trailer. You just need, it just needs to be seen, visible, and got your number, got a way to contact you. Because you won't believe how many times somebody will be at the gas station and look over and see you getting gas and be like, huh, let me write that number down because I need that. Or my mama was just asking about a dumpster and there it is. Let me write that number down. Bam, more business just by having your stuff on your trailer. But if you're going to do it yourself, make sure you know what you're doing. Don't just put a bunch of scribble scrabble and, and people can't read it. It's too small. And, yeah. If you're going to do it, do it right. That's all I'm saying. So I know this video is going to be a little long because what I was trying to do is get you all the information that you need to start this business. And I'm going to make a part three on the legal side. This is just what you need physically to start your business. And I want to make sure I had everything you could possibly think of for this business because I've been doing this. I got my YouTube channel. I've been doing this for a while and I've been looking at other people's videos. That's how I got into it. I saw somebody else's YouTube page on how to start a dumpster room service. But out of all the people I've seen, nobody has put everything I put in this video. I spent a lot of time for you guys. I, I got down, I spent practically a whole morning pulling everything out of the truck, trailer, garage, everything that I use, lining it up down the driveway. People looking at me like I'm crazy. Why you got your driveway lined up with all these tools and stuff? But I did this for you. I did this to make sure that you have what you need to get this business up and running and make some good money so you can come back and thank me later and tell me how good your business is doing. So I'm doing this for you guys. So why don't you do me a favor? Like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you don't miss no more content like this because I got a lot of good stuff coming up. Like I say, my computer been down for a while, so I ain't made a video in quite a while. And I apologize to you guys for that, but I'm back on it now, and I got some good stuff coming up for you. So stay tuned. Come back. Check me out. Check me out in a couple days. I have another video for you. Write this list down or, or print it out. I'm going to try to get it on some kind of form where you can click it and print it, and that way you can have this list and you can keep it with you all times through the day and night so if you're passing by Lowe's, passing by Harbor Freight, stop and get some of this stuff because you will need it. Uh, that's about it guys. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to see all the messages, the comments you guys been leaving. Thank you for the comments. I've answered all the comments so far that I've seen. Keep them coming. Tell me what you'd like to see in the future. Tell me what you like about what I'm doing. Tell me if anything you see I'm doing wrong. If there's anything I missed in this list. Let me know. I need to know because I might have it and just forgot to post it and forgot to share it with you guys today. So let me know if I missed something. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. I'm Gitter Dunn Dumpster Rental and Junk Removal. I hope y'all like my new shirt. <laughs> like that, huh? Yeah, so stay tuned. Got more content coming up. Gitter Dunn Dumpster Rental and Junk Removal at your service.